Hello, in this video, I am going to explain to the best of my ability why I believe there really is no true global cannabis leader in uh, all of uh, Canada or USA and why it's such a confused sector, basically. Summarize that, so stay tuned. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I talk about cannabis and I've been talking briefly about copper and gold and nickel from time to time. You just gotta, you know, stay till the end sometimes and I, you know, run through that shit. Um, if you, yeah, I'd leave a comment down below. Give me a thumbs up. Appreciate it. Also want to disclose I'm not a financial advisor. This is just for entertainment information purposes. Do not buy or sell based on anything I talk about in this video. Buy or sell after you did your own research, due diligence, and you like the investments you're pursuing. So, all right. The number one uh, profitable company in the cannabis space is True Leaf. Um, you know, and uh, they run a lot of their facilities. Um, I'd say about 60% of their facility is greenhouse. So greenhouse has a very good cost per gram. So they can, you know, get a lot of money out of them as well as they're um, selling it in the store. So they're able to get all the dollars and there's so a high price per gram in uh, Florida because there's not that much flour around. So the supply and demand also goes up. So that is kind of why Florida is kind of the epic center for, you know, the biggest companies that want to make the most money and earn money, EPS. Um, they're, you know, they're, they're spending their time and their energy to get set up in, in Florida. So now when you're looking at companies such as Canopy Growth, Canopy Growth is just um, has so many expenses, right? They're running the company as if they're, um, you know, they're selling $4 billion worth of uh, cannabis a year. But in reality, they're only really selling about like 300 to 400 million. That's the run rate they're on based on last quarters and the quarters before kind of uh, blended together. They're at about a 300, 400 million. But their expenses are acting as if they're a $4 billion, uh, $4 billion revenue company per year. Now, that's kind of the same with Aurora, but not to the same extent. They haven't had the same amount of cash um, as Canopy, so they haven't been as much as drunken sailors. Now, Aurora is investing money and time to be set up into being a global leader, so that is an expensive thing, and the rewards aren't paying for itself yet. But in the future, in say a couple years, three or four years, when the global opportunities really arise, then they should still start really taking the the gold off the ground floor. So that's kind of how it goes because um, the basically um, you got Tilray, you got uh, Canopy, you got Kronos, and they're all kind of fighting. Um, to get some market share in um, in Europe, and you know you got Tilray doing about five million per quarter in international sales, and then you got Bedrucan, um, their international sales in Canopy around eighteen million last quarter, and then you got Canopy's around like five million. Um, mind you, Tilray's five point five million is in USD, so that's closer to about seven to eight million dollars Canadian per quarter. So. You know, it's starting to ramp up, but it's not the same numbers as in Canada or in medical, right? So that's where the revenues are going to grow substantially in Europe. So that's why they're spending that money. But they don't have those um, countries opened up, so they can't really ramp the, the revenues, you know, it, I'm sure... Aurora would love to be able to make 50 to 100 million dollars in revenue in international that would really boost their bottom line and get them closer and give them probably profitability if they're able to do that now with um, the whole rollout in Canada why it hasn't really rolled out as as effectively um, not as many stores so there's been kind of an oversupply based on the stores and the infrastructure so there seemed to be working on it and I heard there was some type of thing about 
the companies can can um you know send it out of their facilities in Ontario now. Um, I think that's so I don't know the exact literature, so I'm not going to pretend I, I know exactly what it meant, but it seems positive towards um creating more revenues in the in the re- recreational space. So that's good. Um, yeah, so basically, and then you got Tilray that they don't have that that big cash that um, that Canopy and uh, Kronos has, and so you really haven't defined. I also think that the companies in the space they spend too much money getting um, facilities when they should have been spending their time to get um, a really good extraction facility. So, I mean, maybe, uh, maybe you know, Aurora will be setting up good with, um, with Radiant Technologies. Maybe that'll really ramp and that'll be really good for their business. But I personally prefer Valence Growworks and, and Metafarm Labs. So, I think if those companies were added to, to a company's balance sheet, that would really, um, you know, make them, their companies um, EBITDA and their net income go up. So, that would really be positive. So, that's something that these companies don't have, so they're not able to create as much um, revenues and um, extraction earnings. So that's something, another reason why these companies, there's no really distinct leader in the space yet in Canada. And um, we will see, you know, basically it's going to be who's going to make the first billion dollars in revenue, who's going to make the first, like, a hundred million dollars in net income in pure net income um those are the kind of things that are going to really set the stage because when you got companies that are you know the potential for them in the future if they're doing like three to four billion dollars in revenue per year they're able to do like maybe 250 to 500 million in net income and that's very um big stacks i mean that's big stacks of earnings so that's kind of where it's going to be Uh, we have to look for uh, companies that have a lot of cash and they're really generating their growth but they're not spending too much money so i think as far as the usa goes i think cure leaf is going to be the leader for some time coming but as far as a single state operator like you know the most profitable company truly is going to be at it for quite a while i think um, because the Florida market is just so hot and they're just reigning supreme. Now with Canada going up to legalization 2.0, things are going to kind of change around because then it's going to it's gonna matter how much revenue these companies make on their vapes, their edibles, their, you know, their chocolates, their, their beverages. So if, say if a company like Canopy, they did 75 million, then they start doing like 120 135 million a quarter that's going to get them closer to EBITDA positive but their their cash burn is too extensive see they spend too much money on in um having indoor greenhouse in indoor facilities and they should have spent more time um working with farmers like village farms and um and extraction legends such as uh valens and uh metafarm labs so that would create a more harm harmony and uh synchronized uh um really like fully into vertical integra- integrated company so that is kind of where we're going but the companies are so scattered because the companies are trying to pick up crumbs here crumbs here like for example i was writing on twitter how um, Twitter, I'm thinking that Shoppers Drug Mart is probably around three to five million in revenue. Like, not a lot. These companies aren't making a lot of money. But if it, say, it doubles in 2020, doubles in 2021 from 2020, then within five years, then that um, channel will be around 160 to 300 million. Um, so, and then five years after that, it, it can be upwards of $5 billion. So that's where we're looking at you know the, there's companies that want to get into uh shoppers drug mart that are already in there so that they're gonna um get their piece of that pie and then with um you know more stores and being set up in ontario because ontario's 14 million um population about 40 percent of canada's population so if 
uh, company really dominates uh, Ontario in the future if it becomes like a a billion dollar industry just in Ontario other companies that are able to get 20 to 30 percent market share are really going to add a lot of beef to their uh, financials so that's kind of where we're going um, as well as you know the CBD companies there hasn't been a company that's really expanded you know CWeb does their you know 80 to 100 million dollars a year in revenues but we haven't seen a company that does like 200 to 500 million in revenue so a company that would be added to one of those big um, LPs in Canada that would really beef up their um, their company so that's kind of where we're going you know um, we want to see companies uh, get their net income their EPS so that's why we haven't really defined uh, a peer leader in the space based on um, intricacies in companies that need to uh, get their pieces connected better um, they need to to um, eliminate a lot of their cash burn and all that good stuff so that they can create a uh, sustainable profitable uh, company in the future that uh, you know has a legendary uh, vision and a future so uh, that's pretty much where we're going uh, there I don't think there's a a peer leader in the space that's been set so far based on these symmetries that I am outlining in this video. I hope you enjoyed this video, you got a lot of insight, gained some valuable knowledge uh, to put in your toolkit. Anyways, keep compounding your info, listen to my lingo, and until next time, cut peace. I'm out.